Welcome. It's so great to see you all this week. Hi, I'm Kim Sandberg, and with me today is Christina Whitney. We're both studio educators at Handy Quilter, and we are really excited to talk to you today about rulers. Yay! All right, well, Today, we just mentioned that we're gonna talk about rulers. Christina loves to quilt with rulers. I'm not so much of a ruler quilter, but I know Christina is. I just love to quilt with anything. And that's that's true too, yes. absolutely. But absolutely. rulers are a fun one. Yes. But we're gonna work with a special kind of ruler. It's called our Jade Series. And let me show you a couple of these. Okay. So there's a set of six rulers plus a bonus piece awesome. um, that I'm gonna show you how to use. So okay. this is our spin effects. Mm -hmm. We have our spinning wave. Very, very cool. We have jade wreath. So you'll notice there's something weird in this package. Yeah, yeah, there's a little extra something there. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Oh, very cool. Our jade border. A border ruler, that's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have two spinning wheels. Ah. So this is our 11 and a half by three and three quarters. And then we also have an 11 and a half by six inch. And this one has that little extra piece. I'm excited to see how you use these. They're really fun. Oh, awesome. But our bonus piece okay. is this eight point crosshair ruler. Oh. And this is the thing that you're going to use to make registration marks on your quilt. Uh, so you don't actually stitch with this. Okay. This is kind of like a stencil to mark the quilt uh, so you know where to go. Okay. So that's our bonus that comes with this set of rulers. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to have you show us how to use these. So. Let's start stitching. You want to show us how we do these? Or are you going to show some examples first? I'll show some samples first okay. if you want. But okay. also we need to go over some safety before we ever start stitching. Right. Always so, ruler basics, right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So let's show the samples first and then okay. we'll go into the actual okay. safety and the rulers. Awesome. Or not the rulers. The, the rulers. The stitching. The stitching. I understand yeah, what you're saying. <laughs> I okay. do. So Kim. Yes. I'm going to show you this sample and I'm going to let you look at these rulers oh. and see if you can pick out are you going to play Stump the Kim? Oh, yeah. We're going to okay. have fun. Um, okay, there's a hint. This is kind of a smaller one. It's a smaller ruler, so it's definitely not one to... Oh, I'm think, I'm guessing this one right here. Yes. Can okay. you flip that over so the camera can see the yes. back of the packaging? So let's look. Oh, how cool. Look, there's these designs that are drawn on the back of the packaging. Yep. So you have an idea of how to use it. That's yep. really cool. And those are just ideas. That's not what you have mm. to do. Okay. So as we go on, we're going to kind of hit on some other things that you can do with these rulers. Awesome. Okay, so that's our first sample. Okay, and that was the five and a half inch jade spin effects. Yep. Very cool. Okay. okay. This one is probably going to be a little easier. For I'm, you. I'm guessing this one is this one. It's one of the border ones right here. Yep. Because I see that, that stitch line there right mm -hmm. there and on the quilt. And you'll notice there's two sides to that yeah. ruler. So you get the two different... Ah. Okay. Shapes there. Totally. And you don't have to use it in a border. Okay. Look at this. A square. How fun would that be to do continuous curve? I, that's what I was just thinking. I love continuous curve and I love when you can throw a little something extra into it. Yes. Super cool. It just gives it that little extra bit that it needs. I love it. Okay. So now we might get to stump. Oh, okay. Okay. Actually, let me give you another easier one. Are you going to give, give me the easy ones first because okay. then it'll be process of elimination. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Keep it easy. I'll help you out here. Okay, good. Okay. Oh. This one. Wow. It looks like a, Des a Dresden. Yeah, it does. You might be able to see. I've got these red uh, marks on there. Yes. Those were the registration marks that I put on there. From the stencil. Yes. That stencil. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so now I have to guess which one this one is. So it's definitely not one of these two spinning wheels. Those are too big. Um, I'm guessing it's the wreath. Am I right? Yes, because okay. it's got this little point up here. Oh, that's okay. That's the point here on this dress. Okay, thing. very cool. Oh, that's, okay, I love that you made that and how it's got this circle in the center. That, I want to quilt that on a quilt now. And the best part is the circle is part of the ruler. It's part of the ruler? It is part of the ruler. So this it's, whole thing this little part right here? Just using the ruler. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so that's I awesome. Have to go back and do anything. I love that. Okay. This one, how cool is that? Uh, it's very cool. I got to figure out, I'm thinking. Oh, I should have given you the other easy I'm one. I'm thinking it's this one. Is it the, is it this spinning wheel? The, the 11, 11 and a half by six spinning wheel? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. And if you look at the back, again, it's oh. got those design ideas. So if you wanted to cheat on the others, but the others look would be easy to figure that. out. Look at that, all those different ideas. So That's if you cool. can zoom in just a little bit, you can see that 
You don't wow. have to do any certain number of rotations. I love that. With this one, I did eight rotations. You mm -hmm. can do increments of that. So 16, 32, uh, and that changes the entire look of the design. That's so cool. And I love how this one right here, it's probably kind of hard for you guys to see on the screen, but there's actually numbers. So it gives you your stitching path. Uh -huh, and they're color coordinated. That and you so want to cool. know what? What? I lied to you. That's the wrong ruler. Is it the wrong one? <laughs> was it was it this one? Was it the bigger one? Let's look at the design on the back. Okay. Did that oh, look, better? look at that design right there. Sheesh, that does look nice and familiar. You're right. Well, hey, I at least had the right shape. You, you at did. At least I yes. had the right shape. And I even stitched these out and I still told you it was the wrong. <laughs> but I do, I do love how this one, once again, um, to show how to do this design, it is colored and it actually has the numbers. So you know where to start. You can follow that very easily. That's yes. really cool. So now. Now. <laughs> oh, there's only two left. I ought to be able to get it right this time, right? I'm guessing this one. <laughs> um, let's look at the back before we make any <laughs> answers. <laughs> let's see. Yes, oh, the look, right one. it's this one right here. Yep. Fantastic. Okay, so, that's And super... again, this one is another one where oh. you can change how many rotations. Um, this one was really cool. We're going to stitch this one out. I love this one. I actually have a quilt that I pieced that has a similar look to this. This would be so much fun to quilt on top of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have you hold that ruler okay. so I make sure I use that one to stitch okay. with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this one back. And guess what? There's only one left. I think I'm going to get this one on I the first think guess. I you it's can get this one. This one? That is the one. That is our spinning wave. The spinning wave. And it has two different curves on it. Is it that does. right? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. I For this stitch oh. out, I just did one. And mm -hmm. I want to um, point out a couple things. First of all, uh -huh. if you go on to our website, okay. like when you go to order these, mm -hmm. there should be a link to each one of these rulers for a video. Oh. And that video shows nice. that particular ruler being stitched out in a little bit more depth than what we're going to do today. Okay, very cool. So some more how-to videos on the yes. handyquilter.com website. Correct. That's great. Thanks. Yep. So the other thing I wanted to point out with okay. this one is you need to use handy grip for oh. some of these rulers. So if you can zoom in here, you can see if the ruler shifts a little bit, this particular one, you're going to stitch out and come back in on the uh, same line. You travel. So if your ruler shifts, you're not going to be able to get that proper gotcha. over stitch. Or, or you can make that a design element because, you know, I did yeah. it several times. Yeah, so you did. I didn't just say that that was what I planned to do. Design element. Exactly. Once is a mistake. Um, twice is an intentional customization. Uh -huh. Isn't that right? Yeah. And if you can't see it riding by on a horse from three feet away, you, it doesn't exist. It doesn't count. See, the other thing so you this could, is perfect. Uh, the other thing you could always do, it is perfect. The other thing you could always do too is stitch in a thread that's similar to your background yes. color, mm -hmm. your thread, your fabric color. And yeah. You wouldn't even see that, but and I'm glad that you brought that up because when we are stitching out, we are using bright threads right. so that you can see it better on here. Um, that's not how we would normally stitch on a regular quilt. Right. So well, don't stress yourself out. Yeah, okay. exactly. Cool though. I'm excited to see how they stitch out. So is yeah. that what we're going to do next? Um, yes. Okay. So that spinning wave that we have here, I don't know if we mentioned, but it has two different waves. It does have two different angles on it on both sides of it. That is super cool. I love it. Okay. okay. So we're going to stitch this design out. Ah. Now I'm looking at this and I'm recognizing two different rulers here. Yeah. Because we're going to use this one and then yeah, we'll see if, let's see if I get it right. right ones. And we're going to use this one, right? Is yes. that the inside one? Okay. Awesome. And we're going to be really wild and crazy. Did you know that you can use more than one ruler? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm excited. Don't limit yourself. Mix and match. Right. So let's look at this design. Oh, Christina, look at you. That's ruling your rulers right there. How many rulers did I use on this one? Ooh. Mm. Um, one, two, three, four, five, at least three. I can see. Is there more? I used three rulers. Three rulers. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then so I cute. did some free motion. Your little I did hearts. some little fills. Oh, I love it. So yeah, just. Have fun. That, Practice. We talked about doodling. Yeah. Doodle, doodle, doodle. Yep. That's yep. my favorite thing to do. And you can actually use the rulers while you're doodling. I think uh -huh. that's one thing that I, the first time somebody showed that to me, it kind of blew my mind. I was like, wait, I can use these on paper. I don't have to just use them at the machine. But I totally practice drawing with them to create your designs. One note with that, though, mm -hmm. is 
remember your stitch outlines a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the needle. Right, right. So you want to, when you're drawing, try to kind of mimic that quarter inch so that right. you can see what it's actually going to stitch out at. Okay. That's yeah. a good tip. Very good tip. Okay. Have we covered everything we need to? I think we have, but if we're ready to start stitching, do we want to talk about ruler safety really we quickly for a minute? Some safety. basics with rulers. I'm pull this out of the packaging. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So ruler safety. Ruler safety. We want to have a ruler base on our machine. And Absolutely. remember that the ruler base is machine specific. So you need to have the one that right. fits your machine. Right. So the Amara and the Forte can interchange, but right. all the other machines, you need to make sure you have the, the proper ruler base. And what that is, is it's just a little table under here that it extends it out and gives you a little bit more support to hold that ruler in place. So it's safe and it doesn't rock or move. It can yeah. stay exactly yeah. where it needs to. You're not trying okay. to balance it right on that little throat oh, plate. On the throat that's a little curved? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So ruler base is number one. Okay. You also want to make sure that you're using a sure foot. Right. Sure foot. I call it an insurance foot because yes. it protects my rulers. Yeah. And it protects it because it's that higher profile. Gotcha. So like your regular foot would be down here, which mm -hmm. is actually called the ruler foot. Right. It's right. A smaller profile. And the sure foot helps to protect the ruler from hopping over and getting jammed in that needle. And Nicking I don't know about edge. you, but I did that the first week I had my machine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was on the floor crying. Yeah. I I've, I killed it. I've done it too. I, I hate to admit it, but. That was before the short foot came out. Yeah, yeah, me too. Since then. Me too, especially because the ruler foot comes standard with the machine. And I thought, oh, this is the one to use. And I started using it and I did. I chipped the edge of a ruler and broke yeah. a needle. You can use that foot, but yeah. we do recommend the sure foot. Yeah. Um, just a little tip, you mm -hmm. can also use echo feet with your rulers. Right. You can use couching feet with your oh, rulers. Oh, I love that. So you're not limited to just the sure foot. But if you're just doing basic ruler work, we do advise using the sure foot. The sure foot. Okay. Awesome. Okay. We talked about this a little bit is our handy grip. Handy grip. And this is just a kind of a sticky, mm -hmm. it's like sandpaper that yeah. you stick on the back of the ruler and that will hold the ruler against the fabric so it doesn't shift like that example that I showed earlier. Right. So just so you guys know, this is my disclaimer for when we stitch out. I don't have handy grip on any of the rulers I'm going to be okay. stitching with today. So. Uh -huh. That's sure, Christina. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. No, no, we'll, we'll cut you some slack because I totally agree. I uh, That handy grip just keeps it exactly where it needs mm -hmm. to stay. And don't forget, you can use handy grip and you can use these rulers on stationary machines too. It's not yeah. just a long arm. Even if you quilt on your home machine, mm -hmm. handy grip and these rulers all work. Yeah. Now, of course, on a stationary machine or on your home machine, you don't need a sure foot or a ruler base. Actually, you still want to use a sure foot. What am I saying? Not, but not on your domestic machine. But you don't need a ruler base on your stationary machine. On a domestic machine, though, I would advise having a table. Yes. A flat surface. Yes. Not just the throat, the throat space of your machine. Yep. Okay. So. Are you ready? We got all of our safety. Okay. Oh, probably we're going to stitch. Yay! So we're going to start out with the eight point crosshair. Okay. And I'm going to draw. I'm going to use, this one is a water erasable pen. Okay. You can use whatever product you have. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that this is a thicker material. Right. So you need to make sure that you have a marker that the tip is long enough that you can get all right. the way down to the fabric. Right. And once again, what's the number one tip we always tell people when we're working with marking tools? Marking tools. You want to test. You want to test. You want to make sure that it's not going to stay on your fabric long term. So do a little test ahead of time. Um, also, with the water soluble, you want to test the fabric that it can get wet without bleeding. Right. Over. Ah, because we don't we don't need any of that. Never done that before. Never. Never. Okay. okay, so we're using this grid fabric. So I'm just going to kind of line it up with the grid just so yeah. I don't throw myself off. Okay. You don't need any kind of grid fabric. Right. We're drawing the grid on here. Awesome. So I'm just going to take my marker and draw a line just down these grooves. Very cool. Um, we found that pouncing didn't work super well on here. Is it? It's because it's a that higher profile, right? It's the quarter inch like our rulers are. And yeah. yeah which is understandable. And that has how many points on it? So that's eight points. Eight points. Okay. But it's got markings on it. Oh. So if you see those etchings. Very I'm cool. I'm actually going to rotate it and I'm going to line the etched lines up with the okay. blue lines that I already drew. I see that. And then look, 
I can draw more lines. So now you can have 16 points in there and you could of course do multiples of that. I love that, especially um, some of those designs we looked at on the back where you're stitching um, multiple times like around the circle, it gives you all those points to hit, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so you could do up to 32 lines using wow. this Wow. Some of the rulers are a little bit bigger okay. than this marking. So you could, you know, extend those lines out. Right. If you're really particular, you can put a ruler up there. And Absolutely. I'm more of an eyeballer. I was going to say, you could even use the edge of this uh -huh. to draw against. Yep. Totally works. Okay, Okay, cool. so I've got that mark. I'm actually okay. going to mark my center point here too, because yes. we're, we're going to be using that center point quite a bit. Right, and that's, and so this center point is this extra little piece that that we were talking about, right? Is that what you're talking about, this little piece right here? That is one of them. Okay. So in this ruler set, there's three different types of rulers. Okay. We've got the spinning rulers that are gonna use this little part that we're gonna talk about. Okay. There are ones like this one that it's going to spin around your oh, needle position. Okay. I can see right there that there's a little spot where the needle, or sorry, the foot will just rest mm -hmm. right up yep. against, okay. Yep. So it'll rotate around your foot. Okay. And then we've got ones like the, Okay, that's another one that will rest around the foot. Oh, rest around the foot, okay. Uh -huh. And then the last, it's the border one, the right? Border okay. It's kind of like your regular rulers that it's kind of standalone. You can rotate it if you need to. Okay. Or you can advance it as you finish stitching out like the entire border. Just stitch like a part of it, regular move the ruler over, stitch out the next part. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see how these work. Well, which one do you want to start with? Um, I want you to do this one right here. Okay. I like this one. Yes, I will. So this is the 11 and a half by six inch jade spinning wheel. So, and I notice as I'm pulling it out, there's like actually an extra little piece here. It's like the puzzle piece. Yeah, it is. It's kind of cool. So how does that work? Okay. So let me raise my needle up and bring this machine over. Some machines, like the handy quilter, you can lift this foot up and uh, slide this under gotcha. to get to the inside of the ruler. Mm -hmm. Some machines, you can't do that. Right. Or sometimes you don't want to break your thread. Right. To take oh, it out. so true. So you've got this little puzzle piece that's taped on. You okay. You can take that out and now you can remove ah. that foot without having to break your thread or lift the needle or anything. I love the flexibility of being able to get into that shape either yeah. way. That's fantastic. And you can just tape it down on there. Okay. Okay, so in the little package, you have a thumbtack. Oh, okay. And little white discs. Oh, so here, I'm should we set those on top of this purple? So they're maybe a little bit easier yeah. to see. Perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna take this thumbtack okay. underneath my quilt. Okay. Oh, and we're in clear view. Oh no, I don't know if my arm's long enough. I'm Might be easier to do there. from that. Well, no, you drew that right in the middle of the quilt, so. Yep. So I'm going to just put my finger over that center. Okay. And very carefully so I don't stab myself. Just kind ah, of feel. Gotcha. And then I can pop that right through the entire quilt, the whole sandwich. So you're popping it through all three layers there. Yep. And okay. An angle there. So me... And we want to make sure it goes straight through because if it's a little bit on an angle, it might wonk, yep. wonk a little bit to one side or the other. Is that, another, is that a word? Wonk? We'll make it a word. We'll make it a word, okay. Only if you use it in every video you do from now on. Oh, great. <laughs> now she's thrown down the challenge, shoot. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can do so it. So now we're gonna take the white disc. Okay. And we're gonna insert it over top of the thumbtack. Okay. And some of the white discs have slits in them. Some of them are just holes. Okay. I, so it has one a little... should be fine. I'm just gonna put the second on, one on just so I don't lose it. Okay. Yeah, that's smart. That's, that's very smart. Okay, so now I've got a problem. Yeah. This is just something that I learned with doing yeah. this myself. Yeah. You got this sharp point. I was just thinking the same thing. Me and sharp points don't go well together. Yeah, it, it's not fun. So really simple tip here. Okay. I'm gonna take an eraser off of a mechanical pencil. Simple solution. And I'm just gonna stick it right on top of that pin. To hold it in place. To hold and... it in place. And it protects me, so I'm not stabbing oh, myself. Oh, Christina, you're brilliant. You're definitely ruling your rulers oh, today. Yeah. I'm, I'm the queen. <laughs> you are. I love okay. it. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull this out so I can show you guys. Okay. So I was going to say, now wait a minute. So we've got this pin randomly in the middle of the quilt. What's the next yeah. step? Actually, I shouldn't have put the eraser on yet or the lock. Oh. I'll take those off. And okay, show you. that's okay. You I'm showed just, us. I'm so excited to show the eraser. <laughs> it's okay. You showed us how to do it properly. Yeah, so, so now, how does well, the ruler figure into all okay, of this? Yeah. 
So on this ruler, okay. we have this little tiny <gasps> hole here. I see it. So, and there's registration marks there even that go out from marks. that. Yes, and you'll definitely use the registration marks okay. with these rulers. So line it up. Okay. okay. So I'm going to, first of all, make sure that I've got my words pointed up so it's right. the right side up so those registration marks actually show the way okay. that I need them to. They're in the right okay. place. I so love it. now, thumbtack goes all the way through, place the ruler on. Ah. Uh, See? Put the little okay. discs on. It's all coming together now. So we learn by repetition, right? Right, right, absolutely. So I, I'm just helping you guys, everybody learn proper technique. Exactly, everybody at home do it this way I too. I planned it that way. <laughs> practice first, then put the ruler on. I think it's a great tip, Christina. Yes, yes. Practice, practice, Wonderful. practice. So with this ruler, I'm gonna actually bring it oh, over look to at this that. side so we can see. Okay, that is so cool because it's holding it exactly in position. Yes. Love it. I don't have to worry about stuff. Yes, it can slide around, so that's why you would yeah. want handy grip. Right. Um, but yeah, it just holds it right there. That is so fantastic. So what I'm going to do is this registration mark that mm -hmm. you mentioned, there's one that comes up here. Okay. So I'm just going to line that up with this blue line. Awesome. Can you see that? I can. Okay. I can. It's perfectly lined up, too. And then on this ruler, it has letter A and letter B. Oh, smart. What do you think that means? I'm guessing start at letter A, end at letter B. Correct. Awesome. Okay. A for the day for me. Woohoo, you passed. <laughs> Gonna pull up this bobbin thread. Okay. And some stitching. Oh, I love to watch you. I love to watch people quilt. It's so mesmerizing. No pressure. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little tie off there. Very nice. Now again, with rulers, mm -hmm. we always wanna make sure our hand is in placement to control that ruler. Right. Um, if your ruler is hopping at all, oh yeah, mm. you're, you're in the danger zone. Right. You don't wanna be there. Okay, I'm gonna use um, a slow cruise mode. Okay. And I'm just gonna start stitching, hugging around the edge of the ruler. When I get to my point, right there, I'm gonna pause, and then I'm gonna bring it back down. Perfect. And I'm gonna stop at B. Okay, and I noticed that your needle automatically went down. Yes, I set that up on my screen so that it stops in the down position. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna rotate this around. Oh, look at that. And you don't have to line anything up except for that center mark because it's staying on exactly the correct axis. Yep. So it might be a little bit off on the center mark. You can adjust if you need to, mm -hmm. or just let it go. Right. Let it go. Those registration marks are going to go away after the fact, of course, too. So As long as you do a marker that's not a permanent marker. Right. Well, that could always become a design element. I mean, come on, oh, right? Yeah. So some of those samples I did with a permanent marker so that it would be able to be seen. Right. They're not going away. Yeah. But they're samples, so yep. it's all good. Okay, so I rotated around. Notice okay. I have to kind of adjust my hand placement. Yeah, you as do. As I'm going around, I start doing the contortionist moves. Yes, yes. And I will pause at certain places. Like here, I'm about to hit my hand. I'm at the point, I'm gonna pause, and I'm gonna rotate my hand a little bit. Smart. Get it to a better, more comfortable position. Right. Yeah, you never want to try to readjust your hand placement while the machine's stitching. Mm -hmm. That's That's just... It's not smart, it's not safe. Now I do kind of walk my fingers. And that's I'm that's different than moving through. your entire hand though. Yeah. I, I agree, Always I will do that. Control. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I'm, I'm stitching around. La -di -da -di -da. It looks fantastic. You'll notice that it's not matching up. Oh no, what <laughs> happened? This is a fun one. Whoa, did you see that? Um, no. I didn't see anything. I went out for ice cream right you there. You did, actually. Okay. You moved away from the edge of the ruler a little bit. So that's something that I want to point out. When you're doing your ruler work, you want to make sure you're hugging right up against that ruler. Right. And it's especially important when you're doing circles or mm -hmm. anything on a curve. You don't want that wave to go outside to get ice cream. Yeah. As much as I'd like to go get ice cream right now, maybe we should go get some after. Oh, we totally should. Okay. Totally. So I'm gonna hug the side of that ruler. Okay. Coming all the way back to that B position. Okay. I'm just gonna keep rotating. I've got all these extra oh, lines that I haven't stitched on. I love it. Okay. okay. And so this is where in the design you showed us, you had those multiple layers. This is how you build those layers. Yes, let's actually grab that sample. It's right, I think it's, I have, I have this one right here. Oh yeah. There we go. Got so it's, everywhere. it's this one right here. 
that we have. So you're doing all these multiple layers and you started and you're just gonna keep rotating around this. I love it. If I remember correctly, I do about three trips around. Three trips around. And yeah. the more complex you want that to look, the more tri um, trips around you can do. I love it. So with this actual, this one, at three trips around, it's gonna um, match back up. Oh, okay. So this is one where there are a kind of a certain number to get that okay. particular design. Okay. Yeah. And I do believe in the that little drawing on the back, it kind of shows that because it's numbered how many times to go through and do it. Very cool. Yeah, so um, we mentioned earlier that there are videos that go into a little bit more detail on each of these rulers. Right. And they will tell you, you know, how many registration marks should I draw? Oh to get this, which registration mark do I go to? Right. Because, um, you know, some of them are going to be a little bit different. Right. A little, a little different. Well, and I think this too is where we talked about doodling. This is where it can be really handy. Take the time to practice before you start actually stitching with these rulers and just draw them out. You know, get a, get a big fat chubby marker out and use that. That way yeah. you get that quarter inch offset and you can figure out kind of plot out how you're going to stitch. I love it. I didn't cut my thread. Oh, that's okay. Here. Do we need to do a little clip right there? Yeah. You know, I like to just stitch over random yeah. threads. Oh, I do that all the time. <laughs> okay. So you'll notice right now I'm a little bit off from my registration mark. You are. No worries. I'm just yeah. going to adjust it just a tiny, tiny bit. Exactly. Nobody will notice. Right. Yeah, because remember when you get done stitching this out, it's not like somebody's going to have the ruler there and they're going to check your work. Yeah. I would recommend though checking it frequently as you're going around yeah. so that you don't get around three rotations and you're Realize. so far off that it's not going to match up at the end. Exactly. So definitely use those registration marks. Keep you on the path, right? Correct. I love that. Oh, this is, I can totally see those layers are coming together. It looks so fun? great, Christina. Yes. And it's actually minimal work for what you're getting. Yeah. I looked at this design and I was like, oh my goodness, that is going to be so hard to do. But with this yeah. needle or pin in there, yeah. I don't have to really think. I can just escape and then quilt and have <laughs> Enjoy the time. thing. Well, this is where I love to listen to audiobooks while I quilt. I'm a big reader. I don't have a lot of time to read anymore, so I tend to listen to books. Mm -hmm. This is where I could really be concentrating on my book and not get off track because I'm not going to like wander off into left field because that pin keeps you centered. Get it? No. Centered? <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Did we come back? I forgot my witty joke. <laughs> Sorry. Beat you to the punch. So did we come back to the... Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh, kudos, Christina. What was I going to say? Oh, I don't know. you don't have to do any math. <laughs> Even better, because uh, math while reading or math while quilting, math while yeah. anything for me, math while doing nothing else is difficult for me, too. So, but. Oh, okay, let's oh that look at that, Christina. That's fantastic. So I'm just going to take the pin out okay. and move this out of the way. Mm -hmm. So using the pin, that's... Um, I don't want you to stab yourself. I, I have an apron pocket here. We can stick it in. Let's, let's put the cover on. Let's do. I've <laughs> poked myself with this many times. So thank you much. Uh -huh. um, so there are three rulers in this set that use those pins. Okay. So again, it is the... Um, the 11 and a half by six. If there's two spinning wheels. The 11 and a half by three and three quarters. And then that Dresden one, the jade wreath. The jade wreath is the other one that uses the pin. And they yep. do all come with the pin. Yes. So, yep. Awesome. Okay. So now we've got two others that don't use the pin, but they still spin or rotate. Okay. And again, they have the puzzle piece in them that you can take in and out if you mm -hmm. need to. But it's got this little spot right here where you can hug the foot. Ah. So I'm going to do something a little bit different okay. from the sample. Okay. I don't remember what I did. I have it right here if you want a sneak peek. Okay. So notice that I have on here, the points are all going into the center. Okay. Do you want to flip it around the other way? You can do both ways. You can mix and match them. Ooh. Why don't we, why don't we at least flip them around the other way? Just okay. so we're doing something a little different. Okay. 
I'm going to actually show both ways. Okay, awesome. We'll mix and match. Is that okay with you? Uh, sounds perfect. Because, I you love know, it. I am the queen. You are the queen. You're the I'm ruler today. The <laughs> you you do it. You you make it look awesome. I love okay. this. So I've got my center point here. Okay. And if you look at that sample, you can see lots of thread build up there in yes. the center. Yes, yes, you can. If you use a thread that's going to match a little bit more, you won't mm. see that as right. much. Or you can use a lighter weight thread. Right. So I'm I'm using a um, it's Magnifico, it's a 40 weight. Yeah, so if you wanted to do something like this without that buildup, I would say, you know, go up to like a 60 weight or 100 weight or whatever you feel like. Doing. Right. I always love those finer threads. They just melt into the fabric too. Yep. Leave, leave behind nice texture. Yep. My bobbin doesn't want to cut. There we go. Okay, so I'm just getting my machine into position. Okay. I'm going to do a little tie off. Oh, this one has the little puzzle piece yeah, again. They, they all have their little puzzle piece. Well, not all of them, but... The, the ones that do. The ones that need them have <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I am going to just butt that up against my needle there. Oh, right there. I I'm see that. My registration marks, Once lining again. it up. Okay. I'm actually... Let's go this direction so that we can see a little bit better. Start in the same so, spot again. Yep, lined up there. Okay. Good hand placement. I'm right. not pushing down so hard that I'm right. pushing on that table but I do want to have control. Got to be able to move that machine. Yep, got a little bit of a point there and I'm going to bring it back. Okay. So with these rulers, they don't have that pin so they can shift a little a bit little more. Bit. So you got to be careful with okay. that or use the handy grip. Okay. Now with this one, I just rotate it around in a circle. Right. I'm going to do it a little different this time. I'm going to rotate it around 180 degrees. Okay. Did sure. I do the math? You right? did, you did, you got it. You got it. <laughs> I, had to, I had to okay. mentally think there, wait. What is that? 180. So that way I'm stabilizing that side, then that side, ah, rather than smart. rotating, because you have that possibility of kind of shifting the fabric. Right. So that's just one thing that you can think about as you're going around. I love that. Okay, so now okay. I'm going to do this bottom one that I'm going to. So you're kind of doing the four, four northeast, southwest, yep. the four points. Okay. There's no right or wrong. That's just... Of course not. One way to do it. Yeah. No, I like I like the way you're doing it too because I know for me it would help me keep things even because it's uh, you know you do one side and then you do the other side so I don't leave something out. Yeah. And sometimes when you're spinning you get a little bit excited. You don't <laughs> use the registration marks as much as you should. Right. And things shift. Yeah. I can totally see that happening. Never done that. Never. Never. That's uh, an intentional customization again, right? I love yep. it. Okay, so I did those four. I'm gonna okay. actually take the puzzle piece. Actually, I'm not gonna take the puzzle piece out. Okay. I'm just gonna rotate the ruler around. Ah. So now this is gonna be my starting point. Okay. And I'm gonna go up to the top. So it's gonna go out to a point instead mm -hmm. of having that, that fuller part at the end. Yep. I like and it. And I'm gonna cross over a little bit <gasps> oh. of the yeah. other puddles. So this is gonna create more interest in the middle of the design too, because you've got thread pass crossing. I, I love it. I keep saying that, but I really do. I love these designs. I think they're fantastic. Get it around. Okay. And remember, this puzzle piece isn't solid, mm -hmm. so be careful there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you just have uh, just like some clear tape on that to hold it into place. So use your hand if you need to. Okay. Just be aware. And I don't know if you caught that, but my ruler shifted a little bit, so I didn't stop right in my start point. Mm. I just took a couple little stitches to get back into that point. So that you're things on. closing everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's smart. That's smart. So you get a whole different feel from this. Yeah. Just do one last one here. Oh. Look at that. I'm going to take that off. I didn't do a tie off, but that's okay. That's okay not going to be a show quilt, right? No, no, no. Perfect. Okay. Look at that. So a completely different look. Even if you look at the yeah. other sample, it looks different. It and does. And I can spritz this to get rid of those marks. But how fun is that? And then you can even have more fun and go back and embellish. Oh, where's your, yeah, your, where's your one there? I love, you know, I love creating a design and then dropping in fills. Mm -hmm. It just creates that extra punch to the design, right? And my favorite thing to do is to figure out a path so I can do everything mm. continuous, continuous and not breaking my thread. 
So I actually would stitch around. Oh yeah, I can see here. I could do this feel in here and I did it up and down mm -hmm. and then I did the next one, added a little heart in there. So cute. So I was doing all of this center part and then I went, or middle part. Yeah. I went back, added in this spinning part and I just did the spinner coming up to my existing stitch line yeah. and back in. I love Again, it. Again, handy grip would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> or add a design or, element. Yeah, make it a design element. Um, and then, can you grab the jade wreath for me? Yes. Here we go. Thank you so much. So I mentioned earlier that there's ways that you can use a ruler that they're not intended for. Right, right. That is the challenge. Right. That I'm, I'm throwing it out there to all okay. of you guys. Find something that you can do with your ruler that isn't what it was originally designed the, for. The whole, the whole is like stitching out the entire design of the ruler. Okay. Find a part of the ruler that you want to use. Okay. And I actually kind of cheated because this ruler again has A and B. Oh, look at that. And so what I did was I put my thumbtack in, put right. the spinner on. Oh, look at that. And used my reference lines. And I just stitched from A to B. To B. I didn't use the rest of the ruler. And I just rotated it spinning around, just adding that extra element. I, that, that is fantastic. And I love, I love being able to look at these rulers and say, I'm just going to use a portion mm -hmm. of the, the stitch path. Yeah. Don't limit yourself. Mm -hmm. You could even do the circle in the, the center. center of the circle. And does the center of the circle then have that? Oh, look, it's got the from C to D there. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the center of the yep. circle, right? And the back of the package Very cool. has different ways that you can do it. And it also has the stitch path oh, and so the, cool. the video for this one, um, was, is really great too. The, the extra video that's uh -huh. available at handyquilter.com. Yes. And it shows different stitch paths. Awesome. Okay. Kim. Yes. Are you excited to I go am. home? I am. And try these rulers? I am. I'm very excited to go home and try these rulers. I think I'm going to get them out and doodle with them first. Mm -hmm. Come see if I can come up with some different design ideas than what you've done or maybe what's on the back of the package, but I am totally going to be stitching. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Is there any questions that you had on these rulers or that mm. you think our viewers might have I, that you didn't cover? I'm trying to think. You know what? I think you covered everything. That was fantastic. You really, ruler safety, how to use the different rulers. I think the biggest thing, though, is just remember that you're not stuck with just one ruler. Right, and right. And one design. Right. So mix and match rulers. They don't even have to be in the same set. Just mix and match all of your all of your rulers. Right. And create new things. I love it. Let those creative juices flow. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So well, thanks for joining this, us this week. I think I, I had so much fun learning about these rulers, and I think you've had a lot of fun playing around with them and sharing. Anytime I get to play with rulers, I'm happy. It's always a good day. Yeah. We want to thank all of you for joining us. It's so much fun. We have so much fun doing these weekly productions. We absolutely love sharing new educational tips and teaching you how to use things like these rulers. The things that we love that we're passionate yes. about. Yes, that we're so passionate about. So one more time, thanks for joining us and have fun quilting this week.